interviewing. That is something that I kind of take for granted now, but uh, was very nerve wracking at first <laughs> when I did it. Um, one, like I said before, being clear is important. Being clear that you are interviewing someone, especially when you cold call them or, you know, um, like often we'll be doing a, like a story about like a snowstorm before Thanksgiving and I'm, I went up to people at the, at the supermarket and it's just sleeting on me. And I'm like, so are you getting stuff for Thanksgiving? Did the storm change your plans? And everyone was like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, all this stuff. And then I'd be like, and what's your name? And they would be like, oh, I don't want to be in the newspaper. And so I was like, didn't work out very well. But, um, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, if I had just walked up to people and said, hey, I'm doing an article, like, do you mind being in it? I have to use your name. People would just say no, and I could just walk away. So it's it's better to be clear about it. But sometimes you also have to finesse with people and like not scare th yeah not scare them off at first and be personable and stuff like that. Um, but I certainly I don't think you're gaining anything by like tricking someone into talking to you because um, it will it will backfire and probably. Well, not probably. Sometimes people who are talking, if they think they're off the record or they think you're not using their name, will say all these things that maybe aren't able to be backed up and stuff like that. Um, and certainly, I, I wouldn't use someone, something someone said about, I don't know, like a hot issue if they were too afraid to have their name in the paper, generally. I mean, sometimes there are other things, but. Um, I don't do this a ton, but. I cover a lot of stories that people are people know why I'm writing that story. But if you're writing a story, um, sometimes it will put people at ease when you call them up to just tell them what your story is going to be like. Like I'm writing a story about, um, you know, the way that Bay State is changing or something like that, um, and kind of explain it a little bit. That can make them feel like um, they know what you're talking about, and also it helps to let them know they're not going to be the only person in the story. Because sometimes people would be like not comfortable with being in the story if they think they're going to be the only one or hung out to dry or something. Yeah. Um, for you guys, I feel like explaining the website will probably be a good idea. Yeah. Um, I sometimes have to explain the Gazette to people. But I mean, I'm calling people in Northampton a lot, so it's not a big problem. But uh, you know, outside of the area, I do have to be like, yeah, we're this newspaper. This is why we're calling. This is what story we're doing and stuff like that. So yeah, explaining the site to people and explaining that you know, it's not a newspaper. It's a website. But this is, you know, we cover Northampton. And this is why we want to do your story. Um, order is important. Sometimes we had a talk in the office about this the other day. Sometimes it's. Um, I guess I always do this. I always try to think about the order of the questions I'm asking. And maybe that means if it's, a, if it's an interview with someone who's reluctant to talk, easy questions first. <laughs> or instead of saying, so why did you say that awful thing at that meeting or something like that, you know, you can kind of say, this, this is a reaction people are having to that thing you said. How do you feel about that? What are your thoughts on that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Stuff like that. Um, or have you been following this issue or something like that so that it kind of leaves it open for them to say anything without feeling railroaded. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like you guys can figure out the order pretty much. But um, if you know, if there are questions that you think are going to get them to hang up on you, <laughs> you don't want to have those first. Um, I I don't know how many reporters do this, but when I interview people on the phone, I almost always write down the questions I'm going to ask them. And I usually don't look at it at all. <laughs> but it helps me that I wrote it down. And then if there's like a moment where I, I think I might have forgotten something, I can look at it. But if I go to, if I'm out reporting somewhere, I don't do that. But um, experience, just having yes, experience. yeah. Yeah, like I said, like there are things that you figure out that you have to have in the story. And sometimes you forget them. You do forget them. <laughs> like often in business stories, you get wrapped up in talking to someone about their new business and how great it is and stuff like that. And then you leave and you realize you didn't ask them how much money they like invested into like renovating the shop or whatever like that. And then you have to um, call them and ask them. And they don't have to tell you. <laughs> and a lot of times they don't. But sometimes that's one of the things is like you can ask people anything and they might tell you. And that's always great to do. My editor always tells me not to assume that people won't talk to me or assume that people won't answer the question, so that's good. Um, and sometimes there are ways to get it. Like people don't want to tell you how much they bought a building for, but that's you know, in the registry of deeds. And yeah, and that's awesome. So, uh, we always love when there are documents available. Um, 
one of the questions people often ask me at like when I talk to journalism classes is how to figure out how to ask follow-up questions. And I don't have a really good answer to that because it's kind of just like, I guess the thing to do is to, when someone answers, instead of just like focusing on writing it down, which can be like the most, you know, the thing that you're thinking about the most, um, is to kind of think of, like if they mention something that you didn't expect them to say, you probably do have a question to follow up or, oh, I didn't know that was an issue. Can you tell me more about that and stuff like that? Um, and you know, that's something I, you, you can write down a list of questions, but there will always be something that's not on your list that you need to ask. Uh, and sometimes you'll write the story and you'll realize there's this hole that you totally didn't need to explain or you didn't think was important and now you do think it's important, so you have to call them back. Don't be afraid to call people back. Um, get people to spell their names, that's hugely important. Sometimes I get people to spell their names and then I look them up in the street listing. You guys know about the street listing? Like the phone book? It's, not, it's like a phone book, but it's not the phone book. Northampton, all cities and towns have a street listing, which you can buy. I think it's probably like 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something like that. Northampton is like a giant book, and it has everyone's name, age, occupation, and their address. I know, it's freaky when people find it out. <laughs> They're like, how did you know that? Like when I'm... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, the municipal yeah. sentence, yeah. So if you, sometimes um, people don't fill it out, but... I think you get in trouble if you don't, but uh, it's like really, uh, it comes in very helpful and it's more official than the phone book. The phone book can, you know, like white pages online will often tell you how old people are because it knows creepy things. You know, it's like the internet, it just knows all these things. But um, then you'll look it up in the street listing and it won't be totally accurate. And we trust the street listing because it is a city record. doesn't mean that someone didn't lie on their form, but um, you know, it's like they're a registered voter and so it's pretty official. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, off, so sometimes I'll, tell, I'll ask people to spell their names and they'll spell them to me and I think I got them right and I'll check it with the street listing and I will have totally got it wrong. So, um, you know, if someone's name is Marsha, ask how to spell it. People, especially little kids have like names that are spelled crazy now. Like Aiden spelled like three different ways. It's like totally normal and stuff like that. Um, I wish I remembered what I meant when I said get specific. Oh, um... When you are talking to someone and, it, and it's you know flowing like a conversation, they'll say, "Oh yeah, business is really great now. You know, there was this time when it was so slow that like nobody was here." And you have to be like, "Well, when was that?" And they'll be like, "Oh, you know, like five or ten years ago." And you're like, "Can you be a little more specific?" Because it, well, and it's tough to do that because you want people to you want it to keep flowing and to keep being um, a casual conversation, but it will be a hole when you write your story when you say. Years ago, this happened. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. <laughs> sometimes people can't remember, and sometimes you don't have time to double check and get the actual year and stuff like that. Um, and you find ways to write around it. But whenever you can get people to be specific, you know, not just say, oh, when they were, you know, 20 something, they did this thing, it's very good to be specific about it.